In this statics video, I'll solve a friction example problem, and you will learn about dry friction, wedges, and also belt friction, or flat cables. If your class is using the Hibbler textbook, this content is found in Chapter 8, and if you're using Beer and Johnston, this is also in Chapter 8. I'm just solving one example problem, but along the way, I'll give you a couple of different variations and explain how the problem will be different if it were phrased in a different way. So, yeah, let's get into it. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. If you're a mechanical or civil engineer taking statics right now, you're probably going to take dynamics next semester. This topic of friction will come back in that next course. In this course, we're using equations of equilibrium, the sum of forces equals zero. In your next course, dynamics, you'll study friction problems just like the ones in this chapter, but instead of being in equilibrium, all of the blocks and bars and pulleys are actually going to be moving, and you'll use the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration and solve for acceleration. So make sure you're not just cramming for your current test, that you're actually learning to remember it because you will need this in a few months. So I've started my solution by writing out my given find concept solution, which is the format that I like to use. You may have something a little bit different, but that's okay. And the first variation on this problem that I want to talk about is the wording for the final answer. This problem asks for the maximum weight where motion would not occur. This is actually the exact same problem as if it had been phrased the minimum weight where motion will occur. And the difference between those two sometimes confuses students. They seem like solving for a minimum and maximum should be different. If there's one specific weight where it will just barely start moving, then essentially a fraction just tiny bit less than that is the maximum weight where it would not be moving. Moving. So those two values essentially converge at the actual instant where it switches from not moving to moving and so that's why those two variations of the question are actually asking the same question. So you would solve them both the same way and you'll reach the same answer no matter which variation of the problem you are asked. Now looking at this problem in particular, before I draw my free body diagrams I need to actually analyze what type of motion will happen. So where will this object start moving? And there's two answers. So the first type of motion is that the two blocks could stay stuck together and block A would slide along the ground and essentially you have one big rectangle moving as one piece. And the second type of motion would be block B sliding down off of block A. So block A would stay stationary and only B would be moving. So since it's not clear to us which of those will actually happen first, we'll have to solve this problem twice and whichever of those two motions happens at a lower tension force in the cable, that will be the final answer. My free body diagram for this first case comes out pretty easy. I just ignore the fact that they're wedges and assume that they're going to be stuck together and only sliding along the ground, so I just model it as a single block. The equilibrium equations in the x and y direction are pretty straightforward since each force is either vertical or horizontal, none of the angles are relevant. So solving for n equals 80 pounds sets me up to use the dry friction equation that friction at the ground will be the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, so 0.4 times 80, giving a tension in the cable of 32 pounds. And it's important to keep in mind this tension is not the weight of the block. At the end of this problem, we'll have to do a belt friction equation around that round peg, so the weight would end up being a larger value than the tension that we find here. As a quick aside, if you think this video is helping you out, please take a second to hit the like button below the screen. It really does show YouTube that this is valuable content so they can recommend it to other engineering students like you who might benefit from watching this. Alright, so halfway done. Now let's take a look at the other type of motion, block B sliding off of block A with block A being stationary, still stuck to the ground. At least one thing you can be thankful for for this wedge problem is that rotation is not really relevant. So all of these free body diagrams can be treated as being in particle equilibrium. That is, the size and shape of the blocks isn't relevant, 
because we're not worried about the blocks rotating. We're only worried about the blocks translating. So there could be some other friction problems that do require moments, and those are usually gonna be tip versus slip problems. If you're asked whether pushing an object would cause it to slide or whether it would cause it to tip over. In those cases, you'll have to model as a rigid body since you care about the rotation. In this case, we only care about sliding, which means translation, which means particle equilibrium, and it's only sum of forces in X and Y, no moments required. I started off by writing the equations of equilibrium for the free body diagram on the left because T2, that tension, is the answer that we're looking for. Once we can find that, we can stop. So I drew the second free body diagram because I thought I might need it, but it turns out it looks like we actually won't. The left free body diagram has three unknowns on it, and so far we only have two equations, which is a sign that you might need another free body diagram, but in this case, as I said, we have the friction equation, which is a relationship between friction and the normal force at that interface. So I can get the third equation I need as the friction equation. So knowing that this friction force is equal to 0.6 times the normal force, I can go back and substitute that into my x and y direction equations. And looking at those two equations, the y direction equation now has nb as its only unknown, so I can actually solve for that by itself in one step, plug that back into x, and then get tension. Now I put a note over here on the side, the friction equation is actually written as a less than or equal to. The reason I was able to use it as an equals in this case is, is because I'm assuming that motion is about to happen along this diagonal axis of the wedge. So for this problem, if I were to instead look at the ground, this FA and NA over on the right hand free body diagram, in that case, FA is probably not equal to mu times NA. That friction force along the ground, since it is not about to slide along the ground, is going to be less than mu times n. So make sure whenever you use this friction equation that you're only using it in a case where motion is impending, where motion is about to happen. Because in cases like the ground in this specific example, the block is not about to slide along the ground and so there's actually that less than sign. Okay, so let's go back and actually solve for tension. So from the y-direction equation, we get 26.2 pounds for the normal force, and from the x-direction equation, 5.8 pounds for tension. So in order to cause the blocks to slide across the ground required 32 pounds of force, and requiring the top block to slide across the bottom only took 5.8 pounds of force, then obviously that 5.8 pounds would be reached first, and so motion between the two blocks themselves would happen first, and then block A would still stay stuck along the ground. So as a last step for this problem, we're gonna do a belt friction equation in order to find what weight would actually cause 5.8 pounds of tension. Up to this point in this class, normally for ropes, you've been modeling them as being the same tension on both end of the rope. But those have always been cables in straight lines or wrapped around frictionless pulleys. Once you include friction, you have to pull even harder on one end to not only resist what's happening at the other end, but also to overcome friction happening along the length of the cable. I wrote down the friction equation here, and the most common mistake students make with this is using the wrong tension on the wrong side of this equation. And the reason this is easy to do is because a lot of times your free body diagram arbitrarily assigns T1 and T2 just based on the order that you write them. But in this equation, it does matter which one is which. And in particular, if you envision this as being a tug of war, T2 is the side that's winning. Whichever force is larger goes on the side by itself as T2. And so for this problem, it's going to be the weight. We're assuming that the weight is winning and will actually pull the block. So the weight force is actually going to be larger than 5.8. So the 5.8 will be on the right-hand side and the tension we're looking for, the weight on the left-hand side. I've put a drawing on the screen there to help show how to find beta. So beta is the angle of contact where the cable is actually touching that round peg. And for this problem, it looks like it's clearly 90 degrees, 
But of course, keep in mind that beta has to be in terms of radians. So we're going to use pi over 2 radians for beta. And we get a final answer of 12.7 pounds, which does make sense because it's larger than the tension. And we know that this weight force has to overcome not only the tension required to move the block, but also the force to overcome friction between the belt and the round peg. As you work on your homework problems or start studying for the test, these cable and belt friction problems can be a little bit tricky sometimes in order to find the angle, but since they have a very straightforward equation that you can use, you should usually be kind of happy because these problems are usually some of the easier ones that you'll see in these chapters. Wedge problems, on the other hand, even though they're really just regular dry friction problems, the fact that they're at an angle does tend to make the math a lot more complicated. The free body diagrams are still just gonna be normal forces and then friction forces. But once you add angles to those problems, you get a lot of extra terms in your equations of equilibrium. And so the math can be a lot more complex and they can seem like much more intimidating problems. If this video has made you a little bit more confident in solving friction problems and you wanna see more videos like it, consider subscribing to my channel so you can see each new video as they come out. And if you just want to watch another video right now, YouTube's going to make some recommendations and post those on the screen for you. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.